Hey everyone, it's Anthony Ramos. Well, the holiday season is here and Lifetime's first ever LGBTQ-centric holiday film is called The Christmas Setup and it comes out December 12th and today I'm so excited to be joined by the cast. Please say hello to Ben Lewis, Blake Lee, Ellen Wong, and Fran Drescher. Hey. How are you? Great. Well, Great. Can, we, can, we all, can we all just agree it's about time? Gay people want to find a Christmas love miracle too, right? Absolutely. Yes. Sure. So uh, Ben and Blake, I want to start with you because I think a lot of people are familiar, but the two of you are, are a, a couple in real life, IRL. So uh, <laughs> Ben, what was it like for you to kind of get to do this project as you know the first LGBTQ centric film, but also to get to do it with your husband? I mean, it was uh, extremely exciting, extremely like out of left field. It was not something that we were um, expecting at all. Um, we basically got a call at, saying that there was interest in, in us starring together in this movie. And we had heard about this movie when it was first announced that, that, that Lifetime was going to make um, uh, an LGBTQ Christmas movie. Um, but we never thought, I mean, there's plenty of gay actor couples out there. We never thought that we were going to get, uh, get, get that call. Um, so we were really excited. Um, you know, we've been together for 10 years, but this is the first time we've ever gotten to work together, um, which was exciting and a little bit nerve wracking. Um, in terms of like the overall, like, uh, you know, cultural significance of the movie, I don't think it was something that really sunk in for us until um, until they made the announcement online and we could really see the, the feedback and the response from, from people. Um, just like how, just how meaningful it, it, it is to, to the community. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Blake, do you want to add on to that? Yeah, I think, I think that like what you said when you introduced it, it's like, it is about time and it's, it's, uh, we feel very lucky. It's so surreal to be starring in this together, but we feel so lucky to, have that honor. And I think that it is, um, I think it's the beginning of what will be a lot of representation for our community um, on Lifetime and hopefully other networks. I think that they, uh, I think the response has been so positive that I, I really hope that they, that they just, it, it becomes like an every year thing truly. But it, it was, it was so surreal to, to be able to do it with Ben, um, like he said, 10 years into our relationship, you don't get to do a lot of things for the first time. So it was really cool. Love that. Okay, Fran, you play Ben's character's mother. And yeah. I know, you know, you have been a fearless LGBTQ ally for so many years. We at GLAD have worked with you many times. Um, so what does it mean to you to get to be a part of this moment where finally we're getting to see a gay couple in a Lifetime holiday movie? I, you know, it, I, I, it's such a perfect fit for me because I love the fact that I'm involved in a movie that's distinguished in this way. And I think that obviously, you know, everybody feels like it's long overdue, but sort of just to put it into context, when I was first starting The Nanny, uh, CBS called us while we're writing the pilot and said, Procter & Gamble would buy the show outright if the nanny was not Jewish, but Italian. So it's like, I think that, you know, television, it has been a little slow on matching what reality is. And regardless of that, because uh, it's a business and there's always this fear, whether it's invented or whether it's real, that they could, there could be a problem. And there's always this anticipation of, well, what's middle America gonna think? What's South gonna think, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, when we did the nanny, and I dug my spike heels in and said, sorry, but Fran Fine must be Jewish, because that's you know, what we know. That's how we're gonna write the comedy aspect of it. And P.S., it was the Midwest and the Sun Belt that you know, latched onto it first and loved it. And, you know, the networks was happy and the sponsors were happy and all of that. And I feel very confident that, you know, this will be a trailblazer uh, because, you know, it all comes down to the bottom line. It's not like anybody is really opposed to two wonderful young men falling in love. It's just a matter of can they make money showing that? And I think that they can. 
And I think that they did with me and they will with them. And it will become uh, the norm. We're, no we're normalizing it. Cheers to that. And then that's exactly correct because the, the film, this film has the potential to reach, uh, you know, an audience that really needs to see a gay relationship normalized and maybe they're going to see it for the first time. So i um, really excited that Lifetime is doing that. Uh, Ellen, I'm going to hop over to you. So you played Ben's character's BFF. So did, you, did I get this right? Because I heard a rumor that maybe you knew Ben and Blake before. Is that correct? Tell me a little bit about yeah, that. That's kind of a fun moment. When, when Ben and Blake were like, we've been together 10 years, I'm like, well, so have we. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, you know, I met Ben on a project called Scott Pilgrim versus the World. So that was over 10 years ago. And then that's when uh, Ben and Blake had met too at one of the premieres that we were I at. I mean, Ellen was literally there the night we yeah. met. We were with so, us on the night that we met. And you guys met in a bathroom, right? Correct. Well, she wasn't in the men's room. <laughs> we were Ellen in, wasn't in the, the men's bathroom. Room. Was at the party. Yeah, yeah, it was like, in the bathroom of the Robin's Chinese. We were theater. really close to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, it's always just such a pleasure to be able to work with your friends. I mean, like, you never get to do that. And uh, we were texting before and, like, saying, if our chemistry doesn't show on screen, then there's something mm -hmm. wrong with us. Like we're just bad actors actually, <laughs> you know? So like, let's just go and have fun and, and tell the story that's, uh, that really needs to be told. And we were just totally shocked that this is the first LGBTQ Christmas movie. Like when I was told that, I was like, really? There, this is the first one. Like it just didn't make sense and it didn't compute to me because I'm like, but it's 2020, I don't understand. Um, but it really is. And so it just felt uh, important. As a story. Exactly. Yeah. And, and like you were saying, Fran, it's like normalizing that. And for an audience, that's not just this niche audience, it's for a big audience. I mean, the Lifetime Network has, you know, this huge machine going with these Christmas movies mm -hmm. and they reach a lot of people and people love them. And I think the more we can sort of normalize these beautiful humans on screen and, and see just loved ones coming together, celebrating Christmas, mm -hmm. um, you know, hopefully the reality that we live in can reflect more of what we're trying to show on screen as well. I love that. And that's the thing, you know, Lifetime, I think last year or the year before, they had a film, a holiday film, where there was a gay couple and they did kiss, but it was very much a supporting storyline. Whereas this, everyone, this is the lead storyline is these two guys right here. Um, ben, I'm going to come back over to you. You know, thinking about this and the impact and the potential for, you know, changing hearts and minds um, for people that see this, what would it have meant to you as a young man to maybe have seen a movie like this when you were growing up? Well, I mean, I can remember so distinctly being like 12 years old and seeing my best friend's wedding for the first time and seeing Rupert Everett's character in that movie. And I shortly after, and then like immediately just like seeing that character on screen and going like, oh, that looks really fun. Like I could grow up and be like that person. I don't even think I totally had a, a like a full understanding of my own sexuality at that time, but then I, probably that same week, I remember reading an interview with him in Us magazine and um, where he talked and I realized that he was openly gay in real life. And that just like completely blew my mind that you could be, um, and this was in 1997, um, that you could be um, unapologetically yourself and out and have a life and have a career and be somebody that people look up to and want to be mm -hmm. like. Um, that completely revolutionized the way that I thought about myself, you know, and the possibilities uh, of, of, of what I what I could be, what my life could look like. Um, and so, so yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to imagine that people would feel that way about me potentially, <laughs> but I mean, I I do think that um, there's so many kids and that. That, that's that's the audience that I'm most excited about reaching with this film is all those like probably still closeted gay kids who might watch this with their family and will be looking at their family um, to see how they respond to it. You know, it's so important that like, you know, if parents are, um, are pro LGBTQ, which, you know, they should all be, everyone should be. Um, but if, if that's their heart and that's what they feel, it's like reg um, regardless of whether or not they have 
they have suspicions about their, their child's sexuality, they should be having those conversations and that should be part of the dialogue in every household. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because you never know, you, keep, you know, children, you know, they listen to everything and they're, they're looking to you to see whether or not they're gonna be, um, you're going to accept them and love them. And um, so I think Fran's character is an incredible um, role model for um, how, how parents should be and how parents should um, love their children um, for who they are. I love that. Can I, I'm gonna add, can I add something to that? I feel like, Absolutely. yeah, I feel like, um, you know, what, what you were saying, like the to see yourself represented, represented like this, on a, in a movie that is just about acceptance and love and kindness, like to see that as a kid where, you know, there's so, there's so many gay stories that have been made, you know, which needed to be made and which are extremely important, but are the struggles and the hard. And it's like, it's, it's so of today to be like, no, no, no. Like, it's okay. Like it gets better. Love is love. Like all of those cliche sayings like are real. And I think that it's not only for the people that, you know, the closeted kid in the middle of the country, it's, you know, it's the, we have such a, there's so much bullying going on in the world right now. We've spent the past four years with a president that is a bully. And I feel like it's so, it, it's so incredible for people to see this, these two guys that are just embraced by their community and their family and their friends and to have kids like my sister and her husband don't i don't have a relationship with her and her husband or my niece and nephew anymore because they refuse to tell their kids about gay marriage and me and my sister we grew up in the same house my parents are obsessed with ben and i you know like at our wedding like it was like so, it was never a thing and so i think this movie is also for the kids who want to be kind to the lgbtq community but whose parents aren't kind to it. So it's for my niece and nephew who don't know that Ben and I are married, who don't have any relationship with us, who ho hopefully can one day see this movie and go like, oh, that's what my parents didn't want to show? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, these two men love each other, that's it, you know? And so I think it's a, I think it's a, I think the power of this film is like, it's been hitting me more and more since we made the movie, I think, uh, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I'm sorry to hear that, but I appreciate I, And I do agree that it is the reach and the potential is, is tremendous. Um, Fran, I want to, by the way, I wish every, I hope, I would hope that every mother could be just like your character. It's so wonderful <laughs> to see, you know, the, the acceptance that gave, gave me all the feels to see that. Um, luckily I had that with, with my mother too. But um, Fran, I want to talk to you because was there, you know, with your allyship to the community being, you know, someone who's been involved um, with the movement for so long. Was there someone, you know, a family member, a friend early on that you met that made you want to say, you know, I really want to be supportive? I really can't say that there's one person that I specifically thought uh, who was close to me that got me onto the trajectory. I just feel like being in show business I, you know, I came from a very provincial upbringing, you know, and then I went into show business and I was exposed to the diversity of the human experience with all the creative and wonderful, colorful people of, you know, different races and religions and orientations. And uh, that spoke to me profoundly. And... I really felt a, a, you know, like a reflexive response to go to the mat for any group that's being marginalized. I think it's beneath us as a species and I just cannot accept it. And then as I began to, you know, get famous, I felt that it was my obligation really to leverage my fame for the greater good and really have voice um, and uh, I guess I was just coming up in a time, you know, I remember uh, I was doing a movie many, many years ago, and it was just, you know, during the AIDS, the beginning of the AIDS 
a crisis and people really didn't know, you know, if it was contagious, if you sat on the toilet or you drank out of somebody's glass or anything like that. And I immediately kicked in to the attitude that, you know, I mean, I'm not going to turn this into a Salem witch hunt. Forget about it. You know, that's, you know, this is a virus that's a, a human um, problem. And, uh, and we have to all come together in this uh, with a, lot, a great deal of love and compassion. Um, and I think that uh, certainly when my, you know, when my husband came out, <laughs> you know, that just kind of elevated me to Judy Golan status. <laughs> 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 I love that. Um, yeah. Well, no, and, and, but, uh, but seriously, thank you so much for all that you have done and, and continue to do. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's so important and, you know, we really appreciate it. Um, Ellen, I'm going to come back over to you. Um, I'm half Asian and I have to say, you know, it is wonderful that Lifetime is increasing diversity in their films just across the board. So for you, um, what was, you know, how, how meaningful is it to be a part of, you know, this moment with the first gay couple, but also, you know, your character, um, you know, with you being Asian and being one of the leading characters as well? I mean, for me and in my life, I've always, and amongst my friends, being me was never an issue. It's, you know, I am who I am. And that's what this film is with every one of these characters. I think on a personal level with every one of us on this cast, we've all come from backgrounds where we are marginalized and have been in our in, in the world. And, um, and so there is an empathy that comes with that and an understanding of the importance of coming together to tell these stories together and to listen and to, um, and to find a way where we can um, normalize these families and, and put them on a screen where we can, you know, back to what Blake was saying earlier, where, you know, the, there are certain stories that are very, very important to, to tell where you see the journey of, you know, someone coming out or, you know, them, you know, somebody trying to move up in a job or something, but being who they are and maybe having issues with that. There are so many stories out there, but we do rarely get to see stories of, um, you know, marginalized people in this sort of like space and in this world where it's just not an issue, where we're just all happy to be together. And that's what I found really special about this project actually. And I remember the first meeting that I had with Pat, our director, he was like, there's no trauma in this movie. And like, as an actor, you wanna be like, oh, but we wanna get into the trauma. But then at the same time, when you really think about how this is such a milestone you know, of a film um, for a lifetime for this to be the first LGBTQ Christmas movie. You're just like, well, we don't need trauma. Like this can be a happy family and nobody needs to have an issue with anybody being who they are. Well, I was kind of on the edge of my seat if the train station was going to close. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, except the train station, exactly. Um, exactly. That's, the, that's the biggest trauma there is. Yeah, I just think, you know, like, you know, as the same thing, like, you know, being, being Asian, I, and not, it's not the same experience, but I do understand what it's like to not see yourself on screen. And so the more we can all come together and to tell these stories together and put more and more of them out there, especially on primetime television, mm -hmm. I'm just happy to support that. And that's as an actor, as an artist, as a storyteller, I want to be doing more of that. Things, putting things out that we never got that are just so needed in this world. Um, and that's yeah. what I think this is, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, I thank you so much for, oh, I, go ahead. I just think that like, you know, marginalized people, especially in the last four years, if you know, you. If there's enough trauma on the news, you know what I mean? Like you need like an escape, you need a respite from that. Um, and I feel like now that I think Blake and I feel a responsibility now that we are, we have, we were chosen to sort of like have this platform um, to, to try and sort of like, um, 
basically just say that like we are here we, we're, we're happy to be opening this door and we hope that it just just continues i hope that there's more diversity within the representation that we're seeing in holiday movies in the next couple of years you know for um for queer people of color and trans people and gender mm -hmm. binary people because like you know, th those th those are the people who are persecuted the most and who are in most in need of um, of escape and um, and like, like I said, a respite from the from and the representation. Place. Like you yeah. know, like I feel like you know, th like we this is just one story in the LGBTQ community, and and I I do hope and I do think that Lifetime is going to do more, you know? I think that that is their, uh, I think, like I said, it's realizing the, the uh, response, it's been so great. So I, I truly do feel like, you know, with this film, it opened the door and that will just kind of go, keep going, you know? Fingers crossed for that. Okay, we've got a couple minutes left. I want to wrap up with some, okay, feel free, anyone. I mean, obviously holidays are going to be a little different this year, but what are some of our holiday traditions or things that we're looking forward to um, doing this year besides watching the Christmas setup on Lifetime on December 12th? <laughs> <laughs> I guess gathering with friends and family, but I, like you said, Anthony, it's going to be different this year. A lot of Zoom dinners, um, but hopefully like with some of us, we've got our little bubbles and we can get together safely mm -hmm. um, with some loved ones, but just being with people, being with people you care about. And I think, uh, you know, that's to me what Christmas is all about, but yeah, it will be different this year. I haven't thought. Let's so just all make kindness and compassion our compass because that's, that's the most Christmas you can be, I think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I think we felt like it was like doing press was going to be like, either we were going to, it was like the week of the election. So we were like, it's either going to be like, the only thing to look forward to is this, this movie on the 12th, you know? But it's like so nice to be like, look forward to this movie, but also like there's hope. Like we have some, there's like, we can all like take a breath and it feels really nice to go into the holidays with a, uh, a little bit more relaxed, I guess, you know? Absolutely. Um, well, Ben, Blake, Ellen, and Fran, it has been a pleasure chatting. Reminder, everyone, the Christmas setup will be premiering on Lifetime on December 12th. It's adorable. It's exactly what we need. So get your hot cocoa and your blanket and get in front of the fireplace and watch it because I'll be watching it again. Um, thank you all so much. It was so nice to, to see you all. Thank you. Bye, Anthony. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.